So, good morning. I think now we're ready. Uh, it's a real pleasure to see you all again, many of you. Um, on one hand, this is the first webinar that we conduct in 2024, um, but it's also the start of a new webinar series that we decided to, um, to start. And we believe this is also one of the hottest topics in 2024. So effective e-commerce visibility, we'll talk about that uh, shortly in uh, the next slides. And the main focus today is how to conquer the Amazon search. And before we get started, let me shortly introduce myself and also my colleague, Ines, who is here with me. Uh, so my name is Stefan. I'm one of the founders of Metodo, Metoda. Um, I'm responsible for everything, for all the solutions that we provide. So our products, our data, our services. And I have uh, about 20 years of experience in performance marketing and about 15 years of experience in e-commerce. And Ines, happy to hand over to you now. Uh, yeah, hello. Thank you, Stefan, for having me. So my name is Ines Notch. I'm responsible for the consulting business at Metoda. I'm with Metoda now already like since more than eight years. Um, before that, I was working at Amazon here in Munich. I started there um, as a program manager introducing the subscribe and save program in Germany. Many of you might know that. Um, and then worked as a senior vendor manager in the personal care appliances. Category. Uh, besides that, I was also working as a consultant and had a couple of other jobs because I'm already a couple of years in, uh, yeah, working <laughs> um, here at Matona and the consulting area. I'm taking care of like, yeah, navigating our customers through the data channel because, as you all know, uh, e-commerce delivers lots of data, and uh, if you read and interpret that correctly. Um, you can really do data-driven decisions that will support your business and your further growth. Thanks, Ines. And let me also shortly introduce you to Metoda, those of you who have uh, maybe not met us before. So we're more than 10 years now growth partner for leading brands and retailers. And our sweet spot is really supporting everyone with how to grow better and faster. So our focus in the beginning was very much on data analytics and insights. Um, and over the past years, we developed more and more uh, to an Amazon Ads partner. We're now one of the very few um, Amazon Ads advanced partners in Germany and Europe. And uh, we have one belief, and this is basically that every ad spend that you invest uh, should be measurable along the customer journey. And we support you here with our certified experts on one hand and um, on the other hand with own tech and insights. So we have two huge uh, tech products. One is an Amazon Ads AI and the other is a very comprehensive e-commerce data collection technology. And in the end, our goal is to deliver your uh, or maximize your uh, return uh, of your campaigns. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, jump into the agenda. So we first talk about effective e-commerce visibility and why I believe this is one of the hottest topics uh, this year. We will then talk about the Amazon search and we have prepared a real life case study, Lego versus Playmobil, because we believe there are lots of interesting insights that uh, might also be relevant uh, for your business. When I talk about effective, or effectiveness, um, I, I, I specifically talk about the return of your ad spends. And I do not talk about efficiency because our technology internally brings us efficiency in, in terms of process optimization, in terms of um, uh, reducing our uh, times for campaign optimization uh, and so on. But when we talk about effective e-commerce visibility, we really mean how can you uh, earn more from your ad spends? And um, why do we believe it's so important to talk about this topic? First of all, we currently see in the market a lower consumer sentiment. Uh, this is true, for example, for the US. So this is uh, typical data from the University of Mich Michigan, uh, which takes a look at how confident and are the consumers in the market. And the same is also true uh, for Germany. So this is GFK data, where we see that 
compared to the previous years. So this is an analysis between 2006 and 2024. So um, I guess until uh, February. Um, and we see that this consumer sentiment has uh, massively decreased in the past months. And I mean, this typically correlates to demand as well. And on the other side, we see a higher competition in the market. And uh, how do you measure competition? Uh, we simply took a look at the investor reports from Amazon, from Meta, and from Google. And all of these companies see huge increases in their ad spends year over year in 2023, but specifically in the fourth quarter of the year. So Amazon ads has grown by an amazing number of 26% year over year. Meta has grown, and I would have not expected that beforehand, by 24% year over year. And Google has, uh, it's, it's the biggest uh, platform, but still has grown by 11%. And if you compare this to probably your own business growth uh, in Q4 or in 2023, year over year, I believe most of the companies and businesses out there are below these uh, growth numbers, which in the end means that all of your ad spends have become less effective. And um, I mean, marketing is really complex. I, 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 I dig into the topic for 20 years now, and um, you have a typical customer journey you try to uh, build your brand awareness in the beginning with, for example, TV. You try to then go down and down the, the, the customer journey and the funnel um, with different other types of advertising campaigns and setups. Uh, but in the end, um, one thing is, is still missing. And we really lack a universal tracking between all of these different ad channels and platforms. And um, in the end, so the approaches that many of the companies take um, if they want to increase their effectiveness, and this is a very valid approach, um, you simply take the learnings from your lower funnel campaigns to learn for your upper funnel campaigns. And I mean, I think it's straightforward that you should perfectly track your the purchase area of the customer journey. And here you can learn what are the best products to focus on, what are the best creatives, that work well for your audience. What is a good landing page? So I'm not specifically only talking about Amazon. You might also uh, lead traffic to your web shops and other websites. Um, and also what are the targets? So audiences, keywords that work best. And you can then take these learnings uh, upper funnel. Um, but in the end, uh, this is not the holy grail. And uh, I've when I started with performance marketing 20 years ago, I was looking for that holy grail. Uh, because, and I've learned over the past years, few years, that tracking is still as complex as it was 20 years ago, which is quite, uh, well, quite, quite interesting. Um, so we are looking for the holy grail of transparency along the whole uh, customer journey. And um, we've decided last year very proactively that we will not go beyond Amazon ads. So we decided very proactively that we'll focus even more on Amazon ads as an Amazon ads partner. Uh, because of one reason, uh, Amazon is currently building a really fantastic ecosystem and I don't want to, you know, promote Amazon or Amazon ads, um, but it gives you a perfect laboratory environment. So where you can track your upper funnel, like TV with prime video, your mid funnel and lower funnel campaigns in one ecosystem. And you can take these learnings. And this is for me, at least very close to the Holy Grail. You can take these learnings to all of your other um, advertising channels. Um, okay, why did we decide for starting with the Amazon search in this webinar? Uh, there are basically three reasons. So first of all, ah, there are, there's a question. Nice. Please, um, the more uh, active this webinar is in terms of your feedback, uh, the better, I believe. So we will send the presentation deck later on, and we will also send the recording later on with you. Um, and there was another question. We deal with vendors and sellers both, but our focus is more on the vendor side um, or let's say on the brand side. So don't, we don't really care about the, the accounts we, we optimize, but it's better if you have a brand product in the end to really scale you up along the whole funnel. Okay, so why did we focus on, well, did we decide to focus on the search? So first of all, Amazon has a pole position in when it comes to product research for consumers. 
Uh, this is a, a quite recent study uh, conducted in the US and Amazon is with more than 50% involved in the uh, product uh, uh, search area. So it is one of the, it, it, so people don't go to Google like they do with other questions, but they go to Amazon when they are interested in a product or in, in maybe also in a, um, um, in, in a general uh, category. The second uh, very critical topic is why Amazon is so uh, important. Um, they reach the higher income households. And for all brands out there, the higher income households uh, are, are crucial to, to reach and uh, to also sell the products to. And the third reason that this is data from uh, it's some, some months ago, but um, in the end, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't matter too much. Amazon is in the Western world, the biggest retailer and marketplace that you can have. So with the Amazon search, you're covering the mid and lower funnel of the customer journey. And that's why we believe this should be the start of this uh, bigger webinar series. And now handing over to Ines. So thank you, Stefan. Um, I would now talk like very, very briefly about the Amazon search because I believe that most of you are very familiar with that topic. And then we are going to jump directly into our customer use case. Um, so first of all, why is visibility important? Um, on the right hand side, this image shows you like a, a model of an Amazon um, search results page. And as we just learned, more than 50% of the US online shoppers start their product search on Amazon. And what we also know from Amazon is that like more than 70% of the customers never click past the first page. So if your product is on the second or third page, consumers when searching something on Amazon will not discover this product. And <clears throat> although Amazon is offering like this category tree that where you could click through, usually like consumers simply start with entering a search term into the search bar at the top of the Amazon page. Um, and what you can see on the right hand side in the image is that with introduction of Amazon ads some years ago already, um, Amazon expanded the placements on the search result page that are dedicated for paid placements, meaning for advertising placements. Um, the share of advertising versus organic placements depends actually on the category on Amazon because like the more potential advertisers they have, the more um, advertising placements do you see in certain categories. Why if they are like, if the, the category is very, very specific, um, you will have like more organic placements than, than paid placements. Um, but what we also know from Amazon is that like, 35% of the Amazon shoppers click on the first product, and that's always a sponsored ad. Um, I just ignore the sponsored brands because um, the difference here is that even yeah, normal shoppers on Amazon recognize the sponsored brand as an ad, while still there's uh, quite a significant share of shoppers that do not recognize the sponsored ads as an advertisement. They still think the first product they see on that placement is actually the best product fit or the product fitting best to their search um, that they entered. Um, so it is really, really crucial for a brand selling their products um, to be on top of the search result page or to be above the fold, meaning above the consumer has to, to scroll. Um, so, and if you look at this model of a search result page, you see that you, yeah, you can have, if, if your product is performing quite well, um, and you're like showing up on the top positions in the organic positions, you will still not be the first product a consumer will see when looking at the search results page. So if you want to optimize, you always also have to run your visibility. You always also have to run um, advertising on Amazon. And 
what is also true, and that's also stated by Amazon actually, is that the ads that are competing for the top placements or in general for a placement in an, on an advertising spot, they are actually not only ranked and displayed based on the bid, but also on the relevance of the product for the search term of the consumer. Um, so the top placement on, these, um, on the search result page is always a combination of relevance and bid, because Amazon still, of course, even they, they earn a lot of money by advertising, they still want the customers to, show, to see like the, the best fitting products to their search because consumer, customer experience is still like the, the top thing at, at Amazon because if the customer experience is not good, um, they will lose customers and they will lose customers' trust. What we have seen when analyzing data for advertising um, is actually that if your product ranks organically very high, um, or on the first search result page, you have a higher relevance for the, um, for the bid auction. And that also means that you can actually save quite some costs with your CPC because your CPC um, is lower when you have a higher relevance than if you try to yeah, um, rank on the top position for a competitor search term. So actually like paid and organic visibility fuel each other. <clears throat> so you need to be visible organically. You need to have a high relevance to reduce your CPC for your advertising. And with the advertising, you increase the performance, which will then also have a positive impact on your organic visibility. Um, Okay, there are a couple of, of questions here, but I think they are uh, related to Stefan's presentation. So we will move them to the end. We will have uh, at the end we have like a question section, so he can answer these questions. Um, so what we see is simply that <clears throat> you need to optimize organic and paid visibility to really get the, the best visibility and therefore sell the most products. And as I said, we are like jumping pretty much directly into the case study. We were looking at Lego versus Playmobil. Um, I believe that all of you know that two brands because they are very, very famous. Um, but we still brought you some like general information and figures here to just explain how different maybe these brands are. So Lego was actually funded in 1932 and it's a Danish company, while Playmobil was yeah, funded 40 years later in Germany. The products are slightly different. So while Lego is more offering like bricks to build something, um, of course that developed over time and you have huge sets and you can even build flowers out of the bricks. Um, Playmobil was actually starting with like small figures um, to play with. And of course, also they expanded into whole worlds of like, um, yeah, figures and houses and accessories that you can use to really play um, with Playmobil, not only like small figures. If we look at the revenue figures of Lego and Playmobil, um, we are sh sh seeing here the figures since 2011. Um, you really see when you look at 2022, for instance, that Lego is more than 10 times larger worldwide than Playmobil is. And what I also think is quite interesting is when you compare the growth rate. So we were looking at the last 10 years, comparing 2022 with 2012, um, we are seeing a increase in revenue for Lego of more than 180%, while Playmobil grew at in the same time just 17%, which actually means they are not growing at all. They are really flat in their revenue development. Um, so we really see here something like a, a David versus a Goliath. Um, and we were looking at the numbers 
or at the visibility for these two brands during the holiday shopping season in Q4 last year. So we're showing here the total visibility, meaning really the combination of organic and paid visibility. But before we start looking into the visibility, one thing that's quite interesting when we do these analysis, looking at also like how consumers search is that for the toys category in Germany, so all the figures we just looked at in, Ger in Germany, because it would be like too much for one webinar to look into it internationally. So we focused on Germany. Um, so what we see is that about 65% of the traffic in that time period we are looking at from Prime Day 40 went until the end of the year is generic traffic, meaning search terms that do not contain a brand name or a product name that's unique to a brand. Um, that's below average because like branded, 35% branded traffic is actually above average on Amazon Germany. Um, this is because of course, toys is quite a branded category, but it's especially driven by the time of the year we are looking at. Because what we are always seeing is if we are looking at deal events, the branded traffic share is much higher than during normal shopping times. Um, because consumers are looking for like, yeah, a, a bargain from a well-known brand and they already prepare before the deal event um, to see what, what products they would like to shop from brands. Um, and of course, also for toys, um, if you have kids, you will most probably know that um, they are very specific about what they want for, for Christmas. So they usually know exactly which product from Lego, for instance, they want uh, to have for Christmas. Um, so what we are seeing simply is that parents shop like very specific on Amazon for toys in the holiday shopping season. Um, focusing on the branded share, it's really like from this 35% branded traffic, Lego owns already 28%, meaning 28% of these branded traffic is either Lego branded, so it includes the name Lego or, for instance, Duplo, or it includes the name of a product that's unique to Lego. While Playmobil only owns like 6% of that branded traffic, so there's already quite a difference. Um, and we are, we'll see in the next slides what, what impact that has. Um, when we look at the total visibility, that's the outer circle, we see that Lego has a total visibility of 7.3% in toys on Amazon Germany. So not in their specific category, in the whole toys category during that time period and is by far the, the brand with the highest visibility on Amazon in toys. Um, Playmobil is much smaller from a visibility perspective, um, but it's still in the top three behind Lego. On the next slide, you will see where this is actually coming from, because we now looked at the total visibility. Now we are splitting it up into organic visibility and paid visibility. And first thing you see is Lego is in both areas, the most visible brand in, to in toys on, on Amazon Germany. Um, and what you also see is that the paid visibility is quite close to their organic visibility. visibility. Um, what we see is that actually if your if your paid visibility and your organic visibility is balanced, you're pretty much growing with the market. Um, because if consumers that would be relevant as shoppers for your products search for your products, you will or search also generic, um, you will show up in search on hopefully the top placements paid and also organically. If you want to grow your business, you actually have to over invest, which means um, if your products do not make it on the first page of the search results, you actually have to invest higher in advertising to be at least with your advertising slots on the first page. And because then you are able to grow. 
And what we are seeing with Playmobil is that the highest portion of their total visibility is actually coming from the organic visibility. They are under as under investing in pike visibility, um, which most probably has a negative impact on their growth. We also looked on the development of organic and paid visibility. And what we see for like the prime four day event is that both brands had the highest visibility on that deal event because it was so compact. Um, and Amazon starts like the Christmas shopping season with the prime four day event. For Lego, the organic visibility was quite stable. They had a peak in the calendar week 49. Um, yeah, that was beginning of December. So parents latest at that point started to shop on, on Amazon Christmas presents and dip in the calendar week 51, um, which is simply uh, in that week, if you were ordering and that week, it was not sure if your um, Christmas present would still arrive on time before Christmas. Um, so this dip is quite, quite well explainable. If we look at Playmobil, you see that they have, at the beginning of the shopping uh, holiday shopping season, they had stable visibility, but that was declining over time. Um, and this is, this of course could be driven of, also by like out of stock of like relevant or, or highly selling products. But we believe that this is really because um, they are selling less or they are performing lower than the market. Because as you know, organic visibility is of course, on one hand, driven on your relevance. So do your products match the search? But it's also driven on your performance. The performance actually at the end, so your sales decide how high you're showing up on the search results. Um, and if you sell less than your competition, that's also relevant on these keywords, um, this will result in a lower organic visibility over time. The development of the paid visibility looks different <laughs> because, of course, this is something that's not only driven by the performance, but also by your budgets. Um, again, as we have seen with the organic visibility, the paid visibility was highest during the Prime Day Fall event. But Lego also has like a strong peak in the calendar week 48. And from that point onwards, a strong decline um, after the cyber week. So <clears throat> might be a reason of budgets, um, might be a reason of bits. We are not aware of that because you can't disclose um, any, any legal advertising budget data. But you see that after this peak from the cyber week, the paid visibility declines. Um, for Playmobil, it was much more stable on a much lower level, um, but they were pretty much not visible at all anymore from the calendar week 50 onwards. Um, might also, again, be budgets, might also be um, CPCs or bits. So... There is some, some discussions going on. I wonder if third party marketing impacts on holiday shopping. I'm not entirely sure what's meant with that. There's a question. I wonder if third party marketing impacts on holiday shopping. Um, not sure what is meant with that, but of course, advertising. Um, for instance, on Amazon can be done by the brand, but also by retailers. And of course, that's something we will see um, just in a couple of slides. How much advertising you do outside Amazon will also impact the search behavior of shoppers on Amazon. That's definitely clear. Um, yes, Lego is most probably doing a lot more non-Amazon marketing. That's also something. Mm. OK. 
Okay, there's there's some questions, discussions going on on how Lego is doing advertising. I'm sorry. Um, so I will simply continue with the slides, and then we we'll see if we maybe can get into a, a discussion like at a later step because we should have enough time to discuss further questions. So if we look into the details for Lego, um, and we will also look into the details for, for Playmobil, just in a second. Um, from a total visibility perspective, we have seen Lego has the highest visibility on toys in Amazon Germany. Um, and like the highest portion of that is coming from organic visibility. But about one third of their, their visibility is really coming from advertising. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a quite nice share. And if you compare it to Playmobil, you see that there's quite a difference between these two brands. If we are looking at the organic visibility, there is a lot of it depending on branded search terms. Yes, Lego is one of the most searched brands in toys on Amazon Germany. Um, there's just a little bit coming from competition, like 2.8%, and about 6% from generic search terms. If we compare that to the paid visibility, it's still, yes, 80% of the paid visibility is on branded search terms because, yeah, they, they, of course, also protect their brand. Um, but you can also see that 7% is coming from competitor keywords. So like, for instance, like 2.4% of the branded paid visibility is actually for keywords that are related to Playmobil. And what is also very interesting is that they are investing in generic search terms. So like more than 12%, nearly 30% of their visibility is coming from generic search terms. Um, and that simply means that they are really strategically investing in advertising to grow. Um, because you, if you're just like working on your own branded search terms, you will not expand your customer base because you're just showing up on, on searches um, where you would most probably show up organically anyway, and you're not attracting new customers to your products. If we look at Playboy, the Playmobil, sorry, the um, image looks much different. So Playmobil has a visibility, a total visibility of about 2%. Um, and just like 17% are coming from paid. We have seen that already, like the, the, the organic visibility is much higher than the paid visibility. For the organic visibility, um, the yeah, branded share is even higher as for Lego. It's 93%. It's very, very low for competitor keywords, like just 1.8%. And it's similar to Lego, with 5%, Lego had 6% of the visibility based on generic search terms. Um, but the huge difference is when we look at the advertising, advertising based visibility. Because also here, like 95% is based on branded. Um, and only 2.8 and 2.6% are on generic or competitor. So this really means that they are missing out, as I already explained, potential for growth because they are not showing up on potentially new customers. So if we compare that from a strategical perspective and from an advertising perspective, what is going on here, we are seeing that Lego has like the highest brand strength, like the highest share in branded traffic um, in the toys category because they have like a very, very high brand awareness because they invested a lot into brand awareness over the past years. Um, what we are seeing while Playmobil still has like a very a high branded traffic, um, they are like third in the ranking of uh, branded traffic in the toys category in that time where we looked at, um, to like increase the share of 
branded searches on Amazon, they really have to invest in brand awareness uh, on and outside of Amazon. When we look at the consideration purchasing phase, um, we have seen Lego has the highest visibility because yes, one thing is because they are searched so strongly um, by consumers on Amazon, but also that because they are investing a significant amount in advertising and also they are investing not only to protect their brand, but they are also investing to attack competitors and to attract new customers by investing in generic searches for with their advertising. If we look at the side of Playmobil, um, we have seen that the paid visibility is much lower than the organic visibility. So they are actually under investing in advertising. Um, so yet yeah, to balance that, so to grow at least with the market, they would have to increase their invest in advertising on Amazon um, to be able to at least grow with the market. Um, to outperform the market, they would have to invest even more. And what we have also seen is that um, Playmobil also relies heavily on branded traffic in advertising, which means they are missing out on attracting new customers. Um, still, like a lot of shoppers search even before Christmas for like um, a toy for a three-year-old girl or a toy for a 12-year-old boy. So there's a lot of traffic behind that. And that's actually where you need to invest if you want to grow. Um, but of course, it's also more expensive to grow and convert in on generic search terms than if you would just if you just invest in advertising on your branded traffic. So there was one question: what do you mean by competitor keywords? Competitor keywords simply mean um if a lego ad is showing up on a cost customer search that is searching for playmobil i don't know um for playmobil toy so playmobil is the competitor to lego so um if it's it's still a branded search um but it's not the own branded search term, so it's a competitor branded search term. Okay, there are no further questions now. So I think I'm through with my part. Um, and we can start with questions. And the first questions were actually addressed to Stefan. I try to answer most of the questions uh, during your talk. Oh, did you do real... that in the chat? Yes, yes. Okay. But it was a real pleasure seeing all the other questions flying in uh, during your talk. So um, uh, that's really fantastic. And I mean, you can take your time and add more questions so we can discuss that. I just want to also conclude from my side with uh, with the last slide because we thought a lot about how can we best support you um, um, in the in, in the course of this year it's still the first quarter of the year and we decided uh, so we have ramped up lots of new uh, insights and statistics as you might have seen also in this talk and we decided that we'll prepare such an analysis for your brand as well so uh, we have five slots available in april and uh, which, which in the end, we'll run the analysis for you, like you've seen it before, and we'll discuss in a half day workshop, your strategy here in Munich. So if you're interested in, in I think this great opportunity, then please let us know. And if not, are there more questions from your side? Okay, I don't see anything in the chat happening anymore. We will share the presentation with you. We will share the recording with you. And we will also answer all of these questions and add it to the, as an attachment to the presentation. So it was a real pleasure. It was a real great start into our new webinar series. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks, Ines, for all your 
uh, input and support and um, 